identifying nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and verbs. Understanding lexical categories is paramount to being able to function in both morphology and syntax. So you need to be able to understand how words are changing depending on what kinds of affixes attached to the word. How do those affixes affect the lexical category of that word? Is it changing it, for example, from an adjective to a noun or from a verb to an adjective and so on? And uh, in syntax, you have to be able to label the parts of speech of the words in the sentences before you can do diagrams. So understanding parts of speech or lexical categories is really, really important. So first thing, let's talk about nouns. I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. I understand that grammar is complicated. Identifying nouns, there's at least four questions that you can ask. If you can answer yes to these four questions, the word in question is most likely a noun. Number one, can the word take a singular and plural form? For example, book to books. If you can put a plural S on it, it's probably a noun. Number two, can the word come after an article such as a and and the? For example, a computer or the factory, right? Number three, can the word occur in a subject, object, or a complement position? So sometimes you have to put the word into a sentence and just see how does it work in that sentence? What position does it occupy? So happiness is often elusive to many. So happiness is occupying the subject position. So it's a noun. The next one, many students seek success in their lives. Seek is the verb. Success is an object which comes after the verb. So because it's an object, it's a noun. And then the last one, Paula is an investment broker. Who is Paula? She's a broker. So broker comes after the linking verb and it makes it a complement. So if you can put the word in a subject, object, or complement position, it is most likely a noun. Number four, does the word end in common endings that create nouns? For example, meant, testament, experiment. Meant is a common ending that attaches to a word to make it a noun. Does the word, for example, end in I-T-Y? Elasticity. Does the word end in H-O-O-D? As in neighborhood, right? So if, if some, some endings, when they attach to the root, it can create a noun <laughs> through that affixation process. So those are the four questions that you can ask. And again, if you can answer yes to these four questions or some of these questions, the word is most likely a noun. Identifying adjectives. Adjectives typically are descriptive words which modify nouns. Keep that in mind. So there's at least three questions that you can ask. If you can answer yes to one of these three questions, the word in question is probably an adjective. So question one, can the word take ER or EST inflectional affixes? For example, long, you can say longer. Tall, you can say tallest. Now for longer adjectives, three syllables or more, you can put more or most in front of the words. Intelligent, more intelligent. Studious, most studious, right? So if you can put these, we call these comparative and superlative affixes, either at the end of the word or in front of it, most likely the word in question is an adjective. Number two, can the word occur before a noun or after a linking verb, right? Can you say, for example, lazy river? Notice how lazy occurs right before river and it describes it. So lazy is an adjective. How about this? After a linking verb, linking verbs are the, the B verb or anything similar to it. So John is lazy. So lazy comes after the linking verb and it's also an adjective. The third question is, does the word end in common endings that create adjectives? Three common endings here are AL, I-V-E and L-E-S-S. -S. So you have intellectual as in intellectual property. You have descriptive as in descriptive words. You have bottomless, a bottomless drink you may 
get at a restaurant. So those are three things to think about. And like I said before, the best thing is, whatever the word is in question, if you're not sure what the part of speech of that word is, put it into a sentence and look at it within that sentence and then take these three questions and see how they apply to the word in question. Identifying adverbs. There's four questions. If you can answer yes to these four questions, in many cases, the word is indeed an adverb. Question one, does the word end in L-Y? Quick to quickly. For example, she quickly ran down the track, right? So quickly is an adverb. Now, not all L-Y words are adverbs. Some L-Y words can be adjectives, right? How about this, I paid my quarterly taxes. Notice how quarterly occurs right before taxes. So quarterly, depending on where it's placed in the sentence, it can be an adjective or an adverb. Number two, does the word modify a verb, adjective, or other adverb? The athlete slowly ambled down the street. Notice how the adverb has a relationship with ambled, the verb, so it modifies the verb. How about the next one? The obviously upset student complained to the chair of the English department. So obviously modifies upset. Upset is an adjective which modifies student. So in this case, you have the adverb which modifies an adjective. And then the final sentence here, the professor spoke very incessantly. So you have the adverb. This is what's called an adverb of degree and it modifies another adverb. Question number three, does the word have a lot of flexibility in its word order? Maybe it can be placed in different parts of the sentence and it still seems to work. How about this? Anxiously, the students waited for their test results to be posted online, right? But how about the, the second sentence? The students anxiously waited for their test results to be posted online. And the last one, maybe, maybe not, but the students waited for their test results to be posted online anxiously. So we have the adverb being placed in the beginning, after the subject and before the verb, and even at the end of the sentence. So if the word seems to be able to move to different parts of the sentence and it still works, it's probably an adverb. Adverbs have much more flexible word orders than other kinds of parts of speech. Does the word end in common endings that create adverbs? Such as clumsily, westward, and lengthwise. He put his tent lengthwise on the table or something, right? So these three different types of endings can predict adverbs and remember that in some cases the ly word can also be an adjective not just an adverb so yeah you have to be careful about that you can identify verbs by asking four specific questions number one does the word take the past present or future tense verb forms for example go can be changed to went go go can change to goes he goes running every morning he went running yesterday. A sign can be changed to will assign. The professor will assign the homework next class. So if the word can be changed into these other verb tense forms, then it's a verb. Number two, does the word occur first in a yes, no question? You have do you want to go to the store? So do occurs first. And this is a yes or no question because you can answer yes or no to it. So do is a, is a verb, it's the auxiliary verb, actually, and then want would be the main verb here. Notice how want comes after the subject. Number three, does the word express the action of the subject? Does the word come after the subject? For example, the plane landed on the runway without incident. So what did the plane do? The plane landed. Notice how we can change this to the past tense that's one clue. It also comes after the subject. The subject is the plane. So we can say both by the ending of the word, the ED, and both by the position, we can say that landed is indeed a verb. And the fourth question, 
Does the word end in common endings that create verbs? For example, rationalize, radiate, notify. These are three really common endings for verbs.